Hello again, M2 fans. Are there any really diehard M2 fans because they have so many QC problems? Let's hope this one doesn't have them, but it is from a long time ago, I think 2008. Uh, this is the limousine of the 1953 Ford Crestline Victoria. So here it says the scale, tires and rubber, body by cast line. It does say Dave Chang, Dave Chang design, so maybe the graphics or what, I don't know. Here are the other, well, the six castings in release one, or six castings of limos that M2 has done over the years. I do like the packaging, how they show the doors open, but hopefully they're not, hopefully they'll actually shut properly. That's what I'm afraid of. Okay, so this is yellowed quite a bit, got off eBay, and it's even chipped here. So, oh yeah, I, that's much more brittle than it should be. So let's just... Um, the Crestline was Ford's top trim level vehicle between 1952 to 1954. The Victoria means it's a two-door hardtop. Okay. Sorry, I got this extra plastic here. Um, let me get a screwdriver. There's the Castline logo. Two screws, well, stainless screws holding it together. This was powered by a 3.9 liter flathead V8, and it had a column shifted three speed manual transmission. Imagine that, you know, shifting on the column all the time. Well, I guess I have tried column shifting, but there were automatics, you know, you just shift it once. But if this is a manual, that must have been pretty hectic. Uh, I don't know. Or just different, I guess. Maybe there's nothing wrong with it after all. So those are some long screws. This thing still hasn't come off. So the back's off now. Ah, I missed my electric screwdriver. So the base, it does have these little door positioning things. And it's got a diamond plate pattern and M2 logos on each corner. So, all right. This is a nice metallic blue. Compared to some photos here. Oh boy. Okay, so that's shut nicely. Yeah, I, I think the front end matches pretty well. All right. Obviously, the side view is going to be a little bit different of a comparison, but and this thing also has aftermarket wheels on it. But it's got that little fake side vent. The molded, they have molded in the chrome strips, they're just not painted silver. Okay, the rear view here. Some big red tail lights. Uh, there we go. Hmm. All right, seems good enough. So the paint on this guy is a nice metallic blue. It's like a medium blue. Unfortunately, QC problems here. Uh, I don't know what the is like a water stain or something. Or hopefully I can polish it out later. Right? It's not grime. It's just I don't know. Okay, uh, nice flame job here, like a tribal flame job. Uh, and it's fading as well. You know, there's like orange fading to yellow. Oh, but over here it's red. And then they're all outlined in like, could be a silver outline? I'm not sure. Is there a gray outline or a light blue outline? Some casted in wiper blades there. And then the silver paint's going around all the windows for the, representing the molding. Uh, this... Oh boy, that I think I just broke that off. Yep, I barely touched that. So this plastic's really brittle. Uh, that's a real shame. All right, look at this hood gap. It's just M2 atrocious. It's not even even. It's really big here and then big here, but really big here. All right, so this side is also tight. This side is not. So this is why hoods are just a horrible idea. No one can get them right. Not even TLV. It's just not meant to happen in 164. You know, go buy a 118 scale if you want opening panels, I think, instead of ruining 164. Yeah, that is not nice to look at. If I took this measurement of like probably two millimeters and multiplied it by 64, that would be several inches 
of a panel gap, right? It's just horrible. The front's not so bad, you know, the gap, although it's still not even. All right. Well, the Ford logo is nice. It's quite huge. I don't, I've never seen a Ford logo, logo look like that. So it's interesting, right? Learning, seeing something new for a change. I don't know what those three things are. They look like rhinos or something. Uh, all right. The hood does open a good amount, but it's just black. So that's not even worth looking at. You know, it's just horrible. Who cares? Why, why would anyone want to look at that? But uh, this is something I do have to look at, the, look at, and I don't like it. So again, just ruining 164 to show off some blobby garbage engine that really no one wants to look at it anyways, I think. All right, well, the headlights do look nice because they're clear plastic, so that's nice and realistic. This whole plastic, well, no, this is, uh, yeah, it is a separate piece. This is a chrome plastic grill, but I think the bumper is also a separate piece because there's a little gap here. And, but it's a different paint or something. It looks very chrome up here and silver down here. Yeah, so they are two, there are two pieces of plastic because this one's moving. The other one is not. So that's pretty nice. Some black paint in there. Would have been nice if it had like a texture though. I'm sure the thing has a texture, maybe. I don't know. I actually can't tell in the photograph. All right, and there's actually a little silver paint here for probably a turn signal. Okay, going to this side here. It's got some aftermarket wheels, five spokes, nice lug nut details. The red line tire is actually round, so that's nice. The side blocks don't look like truck tires, so this is a nice tire. It's also rounded, so it looks like it's filled with air. So very nice wheel, very nice tire, very nice printing, very good everything there. Uh, as I mentioned, they do have the molded in chrome strips, but they just don't have any silver paint on them. They do have this V8 logo. And, uh, you know, this is like a dot matrix flame print tampo. But it seems better than, um, what's the brand? Auto World with their patina. It's a much finer dot matrix. I'm under magnification, so here. Now you can't, I can't even see it. To the naked eye, at a half an arm's length away, you can't see any of the pixelation, but I'm magnifying things. So this is three times, so that's uh, why you see it. Okay, unfortunately, I think there might be a chip there, so that's too bad. There's no silver paint on the raised locks or the door mechanisms. There is silver paint here. Yeah, I don't know. Something about the flame job, though. Their printing isn't very good. Like there's some pixels missing or something. All right, would have been cool if they had silver here, you know, for the fake vent back here. But it's not there. There is printing here, though, that Ford logo again. And that is a dome. It is a dome casted in. Uh, the taillights are just painted. Unfortunately, they're not painted well. Maybe too much red on this side. Not enough red on this side. You know, I'm sure it's supposed to be red around with a chrome bezel. Dave Chang design is printed well. Uh, this little... I don't know, maybe it's a light for the license plate. Uh, the Ford thing again, although it's not as good as the front one. And then a separate plastic bumper because it is a little wobbly. This is casted in, whatever it is, I don't know. I do feel like they're in the wrong position. Looking at the rear photograph, these should be inboard, more like here. So that's weird. That makes no sense because there's no opening feature here at all. Yeah, these this silver circle should be inboard of these bumperettes. So that's unfortunate. Poorly designed, whoever designed this casting. Okay. Hmm. Going to this side. Looking for QC problems here. Hmm, that's printed alright. Flames look a little better on this side. Yeah, so this side's actually better. Tires and wheels look pretty good again. Going to the bottom, we have two screws holding the back, big treads in the there. It tells you what the car is, what the copyright date was. It doesn't say the scale though. In auto, it doesn't even say, it does say cast line. Okay, it doesn't say M2 machines. I always think of it as M2 machines and not cast line. So I'm guessing there must be a tab in the front holding that thing together. And then uh, nice treads, okay. 
Staggered tires, of course. Alright, so again, I don't like opening stuff, but since it's here, we might as well open it. So the window actually comes with it. So you have a big chrome steer, uh, seat. I, I don't know why you would have a chrome seat, but there's a seat belt details. The steering wheel, well, unfortunately the whole dash is black, so let me get a flashlight. That's a really blocky steering wheel, I think, for the 1950s, but I don't know, maybe that's just the way it looked. But this is uh, clearly modified. It actually looks like there's indications of, indications of gas pedal, the gas pedal and some, maybe the brake pedal there. But there's gauges, silver paint there on the left of the driver and a TV screen on the right of the driver. Why? I don't know. Uh, this big chrome V8 engine here. It, uh, yeah, it's got black or recesses and the exhaust tips are nice. And I think it actually has belts. Yeah, belts there. The door panels you can see have, you know, window winds, armrests, good enough details on the door panels. Yeah, and then the, obviously the chrome roll cage. It is a full cage. It's, you know, got bars everywhere, so pretty nice. Okay. The doors do shut flush with the body, so that's nice. Yeah, I'm not going to bother opening this side. Okay, so really, it's, for me, it's just... This is a problem, right? That's the QC problem. It's just a poorly fitting hood. Uh, I don't know if I can just twist it maybe and it'll shut better. Nope. Nope. It's just a poorly done hood. Yeah, it seems okay in the front, just the back. Not even at all. All right. Backed out. Let's look at a couple other limos from this line here. I guess it's 50. Uh, what is it? 59 Cadillac. Okay. Oh, that's a real shame. I'm gonna have to crazy glue that back. Oh boy, here's another problem. This this thing's a disaster. First it has a massive paint chip. This is brand new out of package. And this door just will not shut. Look at that. See? It's just horrible. Horrible. Anyways, this is uh, an Impala. A 58 Impala that's got a messed up door. And then I have this last one, a 57 Bel Air. So, that Bel Air is super wide. It's, I, I just don't know. It just seems significantly larger than the other three. There's just no way a Cadillac is, should be narrower than the other ones, but it is. So, I don't think M2 has any of these to scale as far as 164 goes. They're just some sort of random scales probably. All right, but they do all have nice tampo printing. It, I'd rather have tampos and decals. But yeah, those hood caps, the Cadillac one in green here, this blue one, the Impala. This one has the best hood so far. But these two here don't have opening doors, so that's also why they look nicer. I mean, look at this. That's just, even from this angle, that's just not very pretty to look at. All right, let's get this up here. Let's jump start the spin thing, because that is a heavy model. So M2 machines. You guys just don't change, apparently, between 2008, when this came out, and 2022. You still have opening features, and you still have QC problems. So, I don't know. I'm not sure why you're in business. I don't buy many M2s. <laughs> you can look up my M2 machines collection my playlist, you simply don't see many. And I pretty much talked about the reasons why repeatedly here. But you, you will look up my Kyosho uh, playlist. I have like over 300 Kyoshos. And the reason why is they don't have opening panels. They're just nicer to look at. You know, and they also have plastic headlights and taillights. But that's, that's just my opinion, guys. Uh, I don't know.
don't know if you guys agree with me or if you guys actually like all these opening features that, again, just make it look horrible. But, all right, anyways, it is cool that M2 Machines did do these cool custom limousines. So that's why I get them. And I'm going to get all six of the castings. So, yeah. So I like you. I like your intentions. I like your ideas. Just some of your execution. I'm rambling on. I guess I'll see you in the next limo review. See you guys.